Hello, welcome and thank you for watching. Dr. Sahal Farzam here, doctor of TCM, founder of Needle Pro Australia and business consultant. I hope you've had a good break and are refreshed back for a uh, big year for 2014. I certainly am. I've got some big plans for this year for Needle Pro Australia along with some of my other businesses. I have some big plans for you. I'm going to be doing a lot of these videos based on request and I want to be talking a lot about some really good avenues to build your business in the best way that I can. So I'm going to be sharing with you a lot of personal development tips, business marketing, uh, business and marketing strategies, advertisements, um, any other really platform that we can do to help you uh, build your business. Today I'm going to be starting to talk to you about goals and goal setting and potentially why most people fail in achieving their goals. So first question I want to ask you is, do you have any goals? And if so, are they written down? You see, most of the time people don't have any goals and one of the biggest reasons for that is the fact that most people are actually afraid and they fear of actually failing. They fear that they might fail if they actually get set or implement any goals. That's the primary reason why most people don't actually set goals. The second thing is if you do have any goals, most people don't actually have them written down. One of the biggest problems with goals and why people don't actually achieve any of these goals is because they don't actually have them written down. It might sound simple, but there's actually a neuroscience uh, behind why people fail, especially if they're not written down. You know that the people that write their goals down actually have 10 times more chance of achieving their goals. So 10 times more chance of achieving a goal if you actually have them written down. The reason for that is because when you write your goals down, you subconsciously command your brain to start working for you to go and get what it is that you're attempting to achieve. So not only prioritizing that your brain will do the, the work and actually activate certain functions in your physiology so you can go and attract certain opportunities to achieve your goals, but it also allows your brain to know what's really important for you. You see, while you've got your goals in your head and not written down, your brain's got about a thousand other things it needs to think about. So the moment you write them down, you actually prioritize in order of significance of what it is that you want first, second, third, and so on. So the first thing is to be sure, absolutely be sure to write your goals down. Now, one of the other reasons why most people fail in goals is simply because the goals are too small. Now that sounds strange as well, but the thing is, you're, there's three levels of how you should set up goals. Let me just cover these up quick, quickly for you. The three levels are the first one where most of the people, most of the population fall into is where most people set up goals based on what they know they will get or achieve. You see, if you know, if you set a goal and you know that you have a strong chance and probability of achieving that goal, your brain actually finds that too simple and will not actually invest in your human power to go and achieve it. There's two primary functions in your brain. The first one is to protect you and the second one is to actually use minimum power. It really likes to reserve as much energy as it can. So if your goals are too small and there's a high probability of you actually attempting to achieve those goals, your brain will simply not invest in you to go and get them. So your, your goals have to be big. That's the first category. The second category is where most people write goals based on what they think that they can achieve. Now that's closely linked to the first one. The problem with the second one where you think you might be able to get your goal, there's no inspiration behind it. And that leads me to tell you about the third one. The third one is where a few people fall into this category. And this category is where the few people actually truly believe in what they want and they actually set goals and implement strategies on what it is they truly want in their heart. It's almost a fantasy. It has to be an astronomical vision. It has to be powerful. It has to be realistic, but extremely powerful. It has to be significant, and it has to have a cause. Your goals have to have a cause because humans only invest in causes. So once you have a big vision behind your goal, and it's powerful, again, almost a fantasy, you start to create some activity in your brain. I'll tell you how this works. There's a neuroscience strategy of how this works and why you're, some people achieve goals and some people don't. So once you start to create a goal that is realistic, significant, and based on a big vision behind it, you start to activate a certain part of your brain, which is the visual cortex at the back of your brain. And the visual cortex starts to move, move and start to actually create activity. And it actually releases certain movement towards the center of your brain called a place called the nucleus accumbens. This is an area of the brain that actually releases dopamine into the prefrontal cortex of the brain. 
And that's where you start to get conscious and you start to become more awakened to the goal. This has actually been proven on scans where you actually start to light up the conscious front and you actually start to get turned on consciously so you can go and attract opportunities for you to set your goal. It's actually called the M drive. This is called the motivational factor. So almost saying that your brain's motivated to go ahead and achieve what it is that you want when you're implementing goals. So three levels. The first one is where people actually create goals based on what they know they will do and achieve. Not good. The second one is basically when you think you can get it, but there's no inspiration there. And the third one is almost creating a fantasy of what it is that you haven't got and what it is that you truly want. Now, once you create this fantasy, you start to get more involved and you start to get more emotional about it. Now, that might sound a little bit strange, but if your goals aren't making you nervous and you're not really getting emotional about the goal, it's still not strong enough. You see, once you create a fantasy, once you create a goal that you, you really, really deeply want and it's based on some strong visions behind it, your brain starts to create motion. Okay, so the fantasy starts to create motion and actually starts to make it into a theory. And the theory starts to attract ideas into your life and your circumstance. And your brain starts to attract these in order for you to get more aligned to getting you closer to the goal day by day. So the fantasy starts, the fantasy starts to turn into some form because it creates motion. The form starts to create some energy behind it. And then you get to a standstill and then subconsciously you ask yourself, are you willing to go ahead with what it takes to achieve this goal? See, most of the time, at this time, people start to retract and they say no because they don't actually see themselves uh, capable enough to go ahead with this goal. Now, I'll tell you why, why this happens. When your goal is not powerful enough or there's not a strong vision behind it, or you start to create an area where you start your memory starts to bring some uh, negative emotions based on the past. So, for example, fear of failure, lack of uh, self-esteem, low confidence, all like shame, guilt. These kind of emotions start to create another motion, and that's actually called the F factor or the fear factor. What happens in this one is these emotions start to override your vision. And when they start to override your vision, it actually starts to get you to decline your conscious state. And once you decline your conscious state, you start to withdraw backwards and you start to retreat because you're too afraid to move forward in case you might fail. But again, you have to understand you're a spiritual being living a human existence. Your spirit is not limited by form or physicality. You are capable of achieving anything you set your mind to it. In fact, the founder of modern day psychology, William James, William James actually said, believe and the belief will create the fact. So once you start to create this uh, fantasy, you start to visualize about your goals. You start to imagine them. Now, let me tell you this. One of the beauties about the brain is that it cannot actually distinguish between what's real and what's imagined. Your brain cannot distinguish between what's real and what's imagined. That's the beauty of it, which means potentially when you're creating a massive goal based on a fantasy almost, your brain does everything it can in order of priority and significance because you've written it down to create that motion for you and move the energy and you start to project into the universe a certain vibration that will actually attract the certain opportunities which will be directly proportionate to the goal in hand that you want to achieve. It's fantastic. Your brain has an M drive which is the motivational factor but also has the F drive which is basically the fear factor in order to get you reclining backwards and withdraw from going ahead with the goal. So the more you visualize the more you imagine, you start to create the activity needed for your brain to go ahead and get the goal for you. Now, the last thing I want to cover is about habits. You see, the few people who actually do end up writing goals and have goals, they generally give up between maybe a couple of days, three days, maybe a week, two weeks at most. The problem with that is because they seem to not understand that it takes a certain amount of time for you to create a new habit. You see, it takes between 19 days to 90 days to create and sustain a new habit. So if you have a goal, you need to create the habits that will attract that kind of event and circumstance based on the goal in your life. You need to create that habit and it takes some time. You also need to realize that it's your current habits that are projecting your current results. So if you're not happy with your current results, 
you need to change your current habits. And your habits are potentially what dictate your behaviors. So in order to change that, you need to start to become more aware of what it is that makes you give up. These are triggers that happen and only you can become aware of these triggers. Once you understand these triggers, you start to become more aware and you'll start to implement new rituals, therefore new habits, in order to get new results. Now your brain is 100% on your side as long as you become aware of what's going on. Once you create a new habit, your brain automatically reframes it and actually retrains your brain to the new habit. And ultimately, you don't have to do much more than that because once you implement the new habit, your brain actually releases. So it reframes, retrains, and ultimately releases the old habit in order for, to make way for the new habit to set in. So give yourself some time and be persistent. After all, most people who think someone else is lucky, luck is simply based on persistence and attracting opportunities. Be persistent. Wait for the new habit to kick in. I promise you, your brain is on your side. It's there to help you and get what it is that you want. So thank you for watching again. I look forward to seeing you in upcoming videos. I'll be releasing a lot more videos. If you like this kind of content, please feel free to share it with your family and friends who may also benefit. Thank you again.